New card, Pog Champ. New card, Pog Champ. Malice White Binder. So after we learned that uh, Malice was going to be absolutely destroyed by the localization team at Konami TCG, we learned that uh, they actually are going to get a good card. Um, I mean, necessary. Necessary, of course, because uh, as preliminary testing has kind of shown, the only one of these with any sort of staying power is the only one that I said would have no staying power in classic MBT fashion. Uh, but make no mistake, I'm still unimpressed by Razal or whatever we're doing. And despite the fact that I was super excited for Apodracosis, as soon as I heard their American name, I decided that I am not going to play any of them ever. Are you gay? Seems a little personal for a piece of cardboard to be asking me. Anyway, let's hear what we got from the White Binder. This is a Link 3 Dark Cybers Link Effect Monster. If this card is special summoned, you can target up to three cards in the graveyard, banish them. So this is, of course, meant to be disruption, but also a combo starter because a significant amount of the Malice cards proc if they are banished and special summon themselves. During your main phase, you can set a Malice Trap from your deck or graveyard. Good. And if this card becomes banished, you can pay 900 life points, special summon it, then you can draw a card. Great. It seems really strong. Seems like exactly what the deck wanted, but won't be the difference maker because the strategy still aims to do kind of the same thing that it was doing before. Uh, nice. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about it. Oh, here's what this does off of a one card combo. Okay, thank God we can squeeze another couple of seconds out of this. This comes from the one, the only half miss. So I expect that at some point during this replay, we'll start seeing ritual cards. The one card is Shifter. All right, so uh, Dormouse, of course. Dormouse, Banish, White Rabbit, Special White Rabbit, White Rabbit, Set TB11, Go into Lizard Oys. Oh, my God. Summon back Dormouse, uh, Red Ransom, Malice and Underground. Uh, activate the Trap into Cheshire Cat, into uh, Red Ransom, into Dotscaper, into... Guess what? It's just Cyber's Combo. That's what we learned last time. White Binder, Banish 3, Summon back Cheshire Cat, who apparently hasn't triggered yet, set a trap. Cheshire Cat, Banish the field to uh, go ahead and draw two Imperms. And then end on uh, Queen Hearts of Crypter. I mean, that's good. That's like a that's a powerful little um, uh, sequence of plays uh, that could theoretically form the backbone of a repeatable Cyber deck instead of just making Firewall Dragon gender fluid for the millionth time. Uh, but, uh, you know, I am not yet impressed. I, I still think that this is kind of mid relative to where the power level of Yu-Gi-Oh is. When do they activate circular? Uh, well, here in America, Razal is the most represented deck in the OCG right now. Okay, let's, I guess we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, where would we go for that? Road of the King? Oh, clearly not, because this came out today, and I don't see anything. Wait, where's the... I, I've... They don't have a new post for it? Will someone link me the thing? I've seen, like, a pie chart. Well, regardless, um, oh, here, I, I'll, I can, I can pull it up. I know where I saw it. <laughs> Just got to get all the way up, baby. Well, perhaps not. Regardless, um, I, I'm sure you have potentially seen the uh, the pie chart that has uh, Rizal as the best deck after a... Oh, fucking, of course I say it. Is this it? Uh, maybe. This is it, yeah. So, uh, horrifying, Rizal is taking over the metagame with almost 20% of... Uh, the field. Well, I'll just be completely honest with you. One, uh, I don't think day one results are particularly impactful 
especially with this deck where if you have read the cards once, you understand how to play it. It's another one of those decks that plays 20 pieces of non-engine. Its linear engine is just sort of there, um, and you'll get mileage out of having read the cards while your opponent hasn't. <laughs> Two is that the OCG metagame is maybe the most frustrating metagame of anything ever I have ever encountered. Um... A world where Tenpai Dragon is like the second best deck. Uh, I really do not. I I I believe any deck that has a reasonable game plan would be able to take that meta game by storm. And three. This is two days worth of reporting. It's the uh, the twenty fourth and the twenty fifth. Again, I don't expect Rizal to be the best deck like next week, but I really I don't think any of the decks currently represented in the OCG are good in any sort of meaningful sense. Uh, are decks being on so much non-engine and OCG thing, or is that just how decks are built now? That's how decks are built now. Decks are being built from the ground up to have 12 total playables within an archetype, and then you just fill the rest with, if you could play Shifter, you play that, and then uh, if you can't, you play... Charmy, Fua Ross, um, Maxi, Ash Blossom, Imperm, Valor, Mourner, Bell, Bistials, and that's Yu Gi Oh, baby. <sighs> Called by Cross Out, yeah. They build archetypes that way because of the max C tax. I don't think that's true. What about max C prevents them from putting like a deck that requires a bunch of main deck investment into the metagame, you know? I'm trying to think of the last like decent deck that wasn't like that. Labyrinth, maybe? <sighs> tier yeah i mean branded branded is like that you're right branded branded is not a compact although first wave branded people were playing just nine branded cards they were like whoo-hoo 